I have been on the throne for over 20 years. I studied in England and America and came back 38 years ago. Uh, when I became the Omu, I met only five elderly women and they told me that he's going into extinction. The beauty that is Africa is that our forefathers, 822 years ago, set up a throne for a woman. That the woman will have her palace and her chiefs and attendants. And the woman will be the spiritual guide. Is it not unique? 822 years ago, yet it's only 100 years ago that the Western world started women inclusion. What truncated the development of women in Africa, in Nigeria, Igbo land and Anioma is the coming of the Europeans. The Europeans came with their ideology and told our people that ours is bad. And so our people did wholesale acceptance of foreign ideas. Our forefathers saw women as complementary, meaning that our forefathers were women friendly. In their wisdom, the wise old men set up this institution and said that in every Anyoma community, there has to be a traditional ruler who is in charge of men, male youths, and the land. There has to be an Omo who is the mother. She's in charge of women, female youths, and the custodian of the market. More importantly, our forefathers gave the spiritual guidance of the community to the Omo and we sought to find out why did our forefathers do that. And the research showed again that our forefathers felt that a man raising in a straight jacket form and a woman raising in multiple ways. Anya <laughs> Majiji <laughs> And in Nigeria, I'm a Gigi Fele. And in Edo State, I'm a Gigi Fele. And in Delta State, I'm a Gigi Fele. And in Boni, I'm a Gigi Fele. And in Omani, I'm a Gigi Fele. And in Obana, I'm a Gigi Fele. at the point of coronation is bestowed male rights. She becomes a man and a woman put together. That's why you hold the elephant tusk. Ordinarily, a woman does not hold the elephant tusk. That's where you wear the red cap. That's where you have the feathers which no other woman wears except the Omu. Because now, as the Omu, they have bestowed you male rights. And the men of Omu, they have been called Wanyali, and they have been called Wanyali, and they have been called Wanyali, and they have been called Wanyali. And they have been called Wanyali, and they have been called Wanyali. And they have been called Wanyali, and they have been called Wanyali. Sincerely speaking, when you become the Omu, you don't have friends anymore. You don't have family anymore, because your family first of all, leaves you because of the nature of the institution. People are afraid of the institution. For example, when I became the Omu, some were genuinely worried because of the intricacies and the spiritual angle. Some were convinced that in nine months I would die because I might not be able to keep to the rules of tendering to the shrines of the do's and the don'ts. Some said she's too Western. The same people are saying now she's too conservative, right? Yeah, but now you see it. The kola knot is four, and the native week is four days. You see it? There are two kola knots here. You see that? It's four. This is female. This is male. This is twins. So there are three males here and twins. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, so there are a lot of challenges 
One is the fact that almost are not paid. Our forefathers kept the markets for the Omu to get her livelihood. But the local governments are in the market collecting revenue. So who will feed the Omu? Who will clothe her? Who will take care of her when she's sick? The palace you're seeing is my personal property. And that was because for 38 years I came back, I was in business. If you look at the photograph there, that will show you a uh, part of what my life was like. I explored my life in Nigeria. I explored my life in England. I explored my life in America. I lived life to the fullest. In traditional worship, we make the door to be low so that you must bend to God. Human beings are too arrogant. That's why we make the door to be low. I am a queen of the water, ordained in the water. I went to the water to perform the rites. That's why I have this temple. This side is the waters of Anioma, the spirit of Anioma nation. These are the waters of Anioma, the representation of the water of Anioma. On the left-hand side is the waters of Edo State, because when I became Omo, I was in Edo State. So we are calling on the spirit of the water. Seventy percent of the almost work is spiritual. Ten percent is to look after women. Ten percent is to look after the markets. Another ten percent is to settle issues. Example, in my community, over 10 years ago, everywhere was burning. Houses were burnt, three people were killed, and the men could not handle it. And the traditional ruler called me and said, can you bring a woman's touch to it? And I did, and I separated all the villages, the boundaries causing issue. Today, no village is fighting the other because of boundary. When you fight light, what do you get? The light remains where it is. It is the darkness that will go round and round and come back to light. There is nothing to fight. Because every day I'm in the temple, I'm, I'm busy praying to God and the ancestors. I must do it the way God Almighty wants me to do it. The way our ancestors want me to do it. I can't be gagged by anyone. I cannot be trampled upon. But I will say there was a point where I was seriously challenged that I started thinking of the impossible. The impossible is leaving the throne. But not that I regret ever becoming the... How can you regret when God gives you an assignment? You can't regret it. In fact, it's abomination to regret. It's a sin because God will even punish you. <laughs> This institution is 822 years old, and nobody knew about the institution until I came on board. And for me, as Yomu, what I have tried to do is to fuse the good of the old and the good of the new for what will definitely come, a bright new day. <laughs> 